Anyone who has heard even a small amount about the evolutionary history of our species has likely also heard something about the out of Africa theory, whether first hand through direct scientific terminology or second hand through its application in popular media. In short, the theory is everything it says on the tin, but I won't leave you hanging. The out of Africa theory, which is a true theory, it's not just a fancy title applied to an hypothesis, is the comprehensive model that describes the geographic and evolutionary origin of archaic and modern humans from early modern humans and archaic homo species out of Africa and across the world. There are currently a few arms to this theory, including multiple waves of archaic and modern humans out of Africa over the course of 300,000 years, but we are not here to delve into the guts of this matter today. I prefaced with the out of Africa theory because it is tangentially related to what we must discuss next. The out of Africa theory posits the evolution and spread of modern humans out of Africa, but not the apes from which we are descended. There have been many other theories, or just hypotheses, about where and how apes evolved and where they spread to, well before they began splitting into the hominins. Before the late 2000s, it wasn't perfectly clear whether or not great apes evolved in Africa or Eurasia. This was due to a paucity of early African ape remains, but a slew of early apes from Eurasia. So, the story went that maybe the great apes first evolved in Eurasia before spreading into Africa. However, not to pull a fast one on you, but even to this day, the understanding of great ape and African ape evolution is muddy. Plenty of early African apes have been uncovered, but it seems that experts are still going back and forth on whether great apes first evolved in Africa or Eurasia and then migrated out to the other regions. All the way back in the early Miocene, 22 million years ago, there were already a bunch of early Old World monkeys in East Africa mucking it up. If a bunch were already there that early, then they must have been around for longer than that to diversify into the different forms of that time. Cool, but we don't care about that right now, we are here for the true great apes, the hominids. The ape lineage would evolve in Africa from those African Old World monkeys until around 13 million years ago. After this point, you begin to see apes outside of Africa, in France, Spain, and Austria. It seems that it wasn't till around 9 million years ago that these European apes diversified and evolved into the true great apes of the Hominidae before or after moving into Africa. However, this story is complicated as many of the apes that left these remains in the fossil record across this lineage only left behind teeth or jaws. This doesn't help paleontologists and paleoanthropologists piece together enough skeletal data to be precise about which lineage evolved into which. By that I mean, there's a very real possibility for convergent evolution in African and Eurasian apes that might skew the picture towards Eurasian to African great ape evolution or African to Eurasian great ape evolution. This brings me to one of the pieces to this puzzle that was published in 2007 by a huge team of Japanese and Kenyan scientists in the journal Ash. In 2005, the same team of scientists was excavating fossils in mudflow deposits 40 kilometers west of Maralal in the Nakali area of northern Kenya's former Rift Valley province when they found 11 isolated teeth and a chunk of jaw, with three intact molars from a hominid. That may not seem like much, especially to dinosaur fans who couldn't care less about some crusty old teeth, but for mammal specialists, teeth are a bounty. Reptiles like dinosaurs often kept the same general tooth shape for long stretches of deep time, but mammals have always been changing up their chompers with even the slightest hint of environmental change. This means that mammal paleontologists can, more or less, effectively use traits preserved in teeth to name new species and genera, but also to place whoever had those teeth into an evolutionary context. Obviously, a full skeleton is always going to be better than a few teeth, but sometimes some teeth in a jaw really do be hitting different. With what little was preserved of this Nakali ape, the team of scientists got to work cleaning it all up and noting the preserved traits. Bingo, enough to name the holotype specimen, specimen KNM NA46400, Nakali Pithecus, Nakayama I. Nakali for the area, Pithecus meaning ape, and the species name in honor of Japanese geologist Katsuhiro Nakayama. 
Since there are so few remains of Nacalipithecus, I think it would be beneficial to take a closer look at them and their traits. The holotype is a right mandibular fragment with molars 1 through 3. The author team says the jaw is the same size as the equivalent bone in a female gorilla. Thus, this individual may have been of similar size to living female gorillas. The researchers presumed the individual is female as well because one of the teeth preserved with the jaw, a canine, is of the size and morphology of those found in female great apes today. However, this could just be a super weird and unique trait of this critter specifically. The molars are heavily worn, suggesting a diet of tough stuff, or at least repeated chewing of things abrasive enough to wear the teeth down, twigs, nuts, seeds, and fruits. Based on the 11 isolated teeth found with the jaw, the canines seem to have been shorter than in other apes. Let's take a look at the premolar. The authors say that the tooth is elongated with the tongue side of the tooth's cusp oriented towards the cheek. This is a common feature of Miocene-aged African great apes. It seems to separate them from the Eurasian great apes. The jaw is slenderer than those of the Eurasian apes. The first molar is big, followed by a smaller one, followed by the biggest, all of which are much more common in modern apes and apes that were living with Nacalipithecus but are distinct from East African apes. Because so little of Nacalipithecus is known, not much can be said of its general appearance. Perhaps some very speculative insight can be gathered from a phylogenetic analysis. When the team of researchers placed the traits found in the Nacalipithecus bones in a phylogenetic software of their choice, they found two possible hypotheses of where it places on the ape family tree. One is that it was a stem hominid, very close to the splitting of the tree into today's great apes. This would make it related to Kenyapithecus. The other hypothesis is that Nacalipithecus is a stem gorilla, splitting off the tree right before the group containing gorillas in the late Miocene Coraropithecus. Some paleoartists have, therefore, reconstructed the critter in more gorilla or more chimp slash hominin directions. Considering its early place on the ape tree, I wouldn't expect bipedalism to be any more advanced than what you might see a gorilla do today. Nacalipithecus comes from the upper member of the eponymous Nacali formation. Other researchers have been able to date this layer of rock to the early part of the late Miocene. So that's 9.9 .9 to 9.8 million years ago. When Nacalipithecus was alive, East Africa was arid, with many evergreen trees adapted for drier climates. This forested environment is backed up by the critters found in the rock deposits a colobine monkey, and some non cercopithecoid catarines. Throughout the Nacalipithecus paper, the authors compared it to European apes. Oronopithecus of Greece is a standout example, and the differences in its teeth compared to Nacalipithecus show that Oronopithecus lived in a slightly drier and more open environment. Its teeth were more adapted for chewing up harder things than Nacalipithecus. Plus, the flora between Nacali and Greece is slightly different as well, but not strongly so. The area was booming with wildlife. There were archaic black rhinos, antelopes, the remains of the pig, Nyanzacorus, Kenyapotamus, Kenyatherium, Paleotragus, Hipparion, and the elephants Dinotherium and Coralophodon. I'm sure there were also cats, dogs, mustelids, bizarre birds, and all sorts of nasty reptiles. Nacalipithecus helps flesh out the evolutionary journey that led to the African great apes, from which we have descended. It was thought that apes migrated out of Africa into Eurasia, went extinct or declined in Africa, and were then reintroduced to Africa from Europe to become the common ancestor of all living great apes. With the increasing number of African Miocene apes, this idea may not be correct, with apes surviving in Africa the entire time. This doesn't discount the possibility that Eurasian apes migrated back into Africa and coexisted with the endemic African apes, therefore biasing the picture of which lineage led to the great apes. The authors note that the remains of Nacalipithecus seem to share similarities in size, teeth, and jaws to the Greek Oronopithecus I mentioned earlier. However, the team seemed to think that the features of Nacalipithecus were just primitive enough to hold it as a better earlier offshoot, therefore being a better candidate for an ape that is closer to the common ancestor. Obviously, some better fossils are needed for this kooky critter before a more solid understanding of it and its place in our evolutionary story can be attained. 
For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.